Welcome back to Margo and John, and everybody, welcome everybody to our Board of Selectmen's meeting, uh, regular meeting for July 26, 2022. Um, the first item on the agenda is the call to order. Um, the second item on the agenda is approval of minutes from the regular meeting held on July 12, 2022. I make a motion, motion that we approve the minutes from the regular meeting held on July 12, 2022. I'll second it. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All, right. all right. Next item is audience of citizens. Do we have any business to come before the board from our audience of citizens? <laughs> Don't everybody jump Don't up at once. <laughs> <laughs> I Yes, yeah. I, you know, I just heard about that really um, probably half a year, about the middle of the school year. Okay. Um, but we, uh, we did apply for a bond from the state of Connecticut. I, it's, it's a little too early to, to say whether we've got it or not, but all the indications are that we will. Okay. Um, so that, that's going to move forward. I, I expect we'll know that by the end of the week, maybe a couple of weeks. Awesome. Um, and that, that was a bond for $325,000 for, for four playgrounds, really. Two at the elementary school, one at Devitt, and one at Platwood. Awesome. Um, so the town will have to invest, I think, $50,000, and we'll get $325,000 to go towards those. So, um, so that, if, if everything goes the way if they're indicated, um, I don't know how, how quickly we can get that stuff going, but I'd like to think we could have that project going by next summer. As soon as school gets out, get going on it. Okay. So, um, so just follow up with what can we as the PTO do to help support that? Do I don't know that there's anything right now. It's okay. in this. It's in this, the state bonding commission. Um, it, it's it's been put in front of them. We put all of our documents in. Um, everything's submitted, and now it's just a matter of getting that yay or nay. Okay. Um, if, I, if it's I, go ahead. if it's a nay, then maybe some fundraisers or something yeah, like that would, it's would nay, be then appropriate. Yeah. But until until we hear if it's if it's a yay then it's all going to be paid for more or less Gen generally you know, speaking, be, everything yeah. will be paid for so there won't yeah. be any need for the pto for that project you might have other projects that you want to do or whatever okay. right and we're, we're putting documentation not this doesn't have to do with the elementary school so just stick with you the pto on this just um let's just keep communicating about okay. it, you know I, I anticipate that um like i say all indications are good Things can fall off the rails, but it's out of our control right now. So we'll, um, when as soon as we know, we'll let the school know, okay. and uh, we'll start moving towards getting that built. If okay. if and when the money does come available, will it be a community built or will it be built by the manufacturer? Because I know in the past with some resident mm -hmm. um, have a community built so where the PTO could help out there. Yep. Um, I would suggest that the school it probably will not be. Okay. And at the parks, it, it might be. Okay. Um, let's just see what the costs are. Yep. Yeah. Um, if we can afford to to build it out and have it built, then I think that's the way we would yep. go. Because yeah. the highway, I know the highway crews are, our highway crew is pretty strapped. Yeah. But I know we've had a lot of volunteers do things in the past. So. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Great. Thank just you. just to follow up with that though a little bit, with the, this bond is for the playgrounds themselves. We're applying for. We're in the process of applying for a steep grant to uh, redo the two um, buildings, the, the gazebos at the both of the two parks. So um, those hopefully, hopefully we'll get that and have that done within the next year as well. So dress up the parks a little bit. Thank you. Good. Anything else? Anybody else? Bobby. Okay. Um, I understand that uh, the first selectman and the CEO had a uh, meeting with the prospective uh, purchasers of Mount St. John, <laughs> and I'm just wondering kind of where that stands. Um, so that's my first question. My second question was um, when they came to survey the property, they also surveyed my property, which I thought was unusual since I wasn't notified, and I was just wondering if there's any kind of action that I could take to put in a complaint or is that just normal that they could survey my property without my permission? So two those two things. I'll jump I'll jump in first. <laughs> if you like. No, I mean I hear what you're saying, Bob. Um, 
a year ago, my neighbor's house was getting sold. Uh -huh. And they surveyed my property too because they couldn't find the pins for their property. So they surveyed my property. They were on my property surveying it. I didn't have a problem with it. Their property is 500 feet away from my property, though, so it but, would but, be but obvious but to anybody. But I'm sure that I, I don't know. I don't know the property layout there, but I don't know if it comes all the way down to the road. Yeah, it does not. That's my property. It, it, in, in, in essence, it does, but we'll, I can address okay, it no, I, as, I, I as just, soon as you're, as soon as you're done. I, can. I, just, I'm just, I don't know that whole layout of that yeah, property. I'm just saying my experience where I live, and I've lived there for, oh, okay. for a few years, <laughs> um, but they surveyed my property to get the neighbor's yeah. boundaries. I, I'm not on the bottom of property. Though, I so. will, um, I'll, I'll try to address, answer both of those questions. Bob. Um, the first, uh, we've been actually talking to prospective buyers of the property for the past three years. Different people have, have come in, said they want to do this, they want to do that, made an offer on the property, and, and the sale has not gone through. This is the same thing. Um, it was an informal meeting. Um, it was something that I, I, I don't think that it's appropriate for, at this point, in a public meeting to disclose who or what it was. It's, it was just someone It was informal. And they've made an offer to the church. Apparently, it's moving. they're moving forward, at least further than most others because they have authorized a survey as, as is indicated by the markings around around the property. Um, regarding the survey, I, I'm going to speak to that not as for selectman, but as a, as a licensed land surveyor in the state. That's kind of one of the reasons why I asked because I knew um, you would know the answer. Yeah. <laughs> the answer is that they, they do, as Duane said, that understanding that your property proper goes back quite a ways from their property and it's actually separated by another property. They do, the property does have that easement that goes through. Yeah. And I'm fairly confident that what they're doing is just mark is locating the access to the property. Okay. They do, they should have, and if, I, I if my guys, if my guys had ever gone on another property yeah. and not notified the neighbor or at least left a card or a note, then they would have been reprimanded. Um, but um, they should have approached you. They do, as land surveyors, have the right to go on your property. They can't do any damage, but they do have the right to trespass in order to complete their survey. Right. That, so, that part, that part yeah. I knew, but yeah. I just thought it was unusual that mm. they actually surveyed my property and didn't tell yeah. me. Yeah. Well, they, they, you, you might be able to get a map out of it from them. Yeah. You know, just talk, <laughs> talk to them. Yeah, okay, nice. you know. Um, get a free survey. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and and then regarding, you know, I understand that there's private and public information and mm -hmm. everything, which is why I didn't say the name of the, right. the business. Mm -hmm. um, but I understand that the ZEO is telling people the name of the business and what their plans are for the business. Oh, and, I, I don't know about and, that. And, and I thought that was unusual. That it if, is. That if that was a private meeting, that the ZEO is telling people who they are and yeah, I don't, I don't know about that, but I certainly will talk to them tomorrow about that because okay. I don't think that they, I don't think that that's quite right yet to yeah. do. So, I didn't think so either, yeah. and that's why I wanted to bring it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Um, anyone else? Okay. Next item on the agenda is appointments and. We've got a hot button these days with our Parks and Recreation Commission, and uh, Kristen Ann Chassie has put her name, her hat in the ring. Um, we had a nice conversation the other day, and we had, had the fortune of meeting her once before. Um, but I think she's going to be a great member of a board that, that needs great members, mm -hmm. needs members. Mm -hmm. so members we, and needs good ones. I certainly appreciate your uh, your volunteering to, to step up with that. I'm um, excited. Yeah. I, it's a good group, and they do a lot of good things. They so, do a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. They really do for, um, yeah. for the for the size that they are. Yep. They do a lot. Um, so, if I can take a nomination, I'll make a motion for Christine and Kate Ch Chassie. I'm sorry. Um, term to expire in 2023 for Park and Rec. I second mm -hmm. it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Kristen. I All think you're board. going to need to go over to the town clerk and get sworn in. Okay. Um, Anytime tomorrow, or she's open late tomorrow. No, right. Thursday. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Next item on the agenda is tax refunds from the tax collector. Um, we have one refund this year uh, that is for eleven thousand two hundred sixty-seven dollars and fourteen cents. I think was from an overpayment. So, 
I'll make a motion for the tax refund from the tax collector in the amount of $11,267.14. I second that. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, next item is discussion of EV chargers. Um, you guys, I'm sure, are aware that we have had an EV charger. We were one of the first towns in the state to have an EV charger on public property. Um, that charger has been, it's been there slowly um, just deteriorating. <laughs> um, it finally stopped, func it's not functioning any longer. Um, so about six months ago, we, we uh, approached Titan Energy, who uh, helped us with the, uh, the, the solar, solar panels. Yeah. And they, they've come up and put together uh, a proposal for three different types. We've chosen, uh, we haven't chosen any yet. And the sustainability group concurrently is working with another group. So we're kind of waiting to see what their proposal is, but I don't want to wait too much longer. Mm -hmm. um, once we get that, uh, that done, we'll we'll get that replaced. Then it should take just a month or so after we after we pull the trigger on it. That one's um, been there a very long time. That's been a very long time. What's going to this? The <laughs> one that we put in there now will be able to charge two cars at the same time, and it will have a timer on it so that um, if someone puts their car in and they can't stay all day like people <laughs> were doing with the other one. Once it they, actually, if they stay, they get penalized. I think I, I'm not all sure of the details, but it might actually even cost them a little bit of money if they if they stay longer than their charge. Um, so that'll, I think that'll be good too, keep things moving. Mm -hmm. We did, when that was working, we, we actually did um, get complaints from somebody who was just parking there all day long, so. Any other locations in town? Well, um, yeah. our sustainability <laughs> representative could tell us. We're proposing that the sustainable committee reevaluate the library for maybe more town hall. Um, Landing potentially that's a, that's a tough sell because of the parking yeah. and the elementary school. So those are still pending walkthroughs, but they all seem viable and helpful. What I worked I worked with um, with uh, Titan, and they're looking they looked at property at the uh, Adams parking lot, which is very with the quick chargers. Mm -hmm. Those are awesome because folks can just come in. Okay. Plug in, go do their shopping, come back. Is um, Adams generally receptive to that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah corporation. They, yes, they yeah. are. Yeah. So, because um, that's why I was thinking the town hall one at Central is somebody needed to go grocery shopping and went, oh my god, my electric cars yeah. needs a charge. Yeah. And the only yeah. one that's down there at the Allied is not Central. No, so. we're seeing it, and it's, I'm glad that we're seeing it. But mm -hmm. there was a lot of t for a lot of time, people, you know, there's a maps. I guess when you have an EV, you know, when you have an electric yeah. car, they tell yeah. you, okay, where I'm going from New London to New Haven, I need to charge halfway. There's nowhere yeah, right now to come up the deep river. So. Can I make a suggestion? Sure. I was just wondering about um, debit steel or um, plywood pack, either one of those. Uh, they, they, I mean, we're not putting the first cut, and we can't do it all at the same time. Yeah. Right? Oh, okay. No, so much money there. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. So, um, Thanks, great idea. Yes. Yeah, no, we haven't pulled any trigger on anything yet, but we do have one existing proposal. We're waiting on another, um, but I hope certainly before the end of the summer to have something in there. I'd like to say within a month, but I don't know for sure. Nice. Um, uh, the next item is discussion of police vehicles. Uh, you guys sign the checks every couple of weeks. Um, or every week you see uh, our fleet um, our, our police force has grown, and as a result, we were lucky enough, actually, to have enough cars to, keep, to support the police force um, to back to, to what, it, what it was and what it should be. But um, the cars that we have are old. We were using them as spares, um, and we did get one new one uh, a couple of years ago. But it, as you've noted, a couple of the older cars, they're, they're in the shop as much as they're not in the shop mm -hmm. these days. Um, and we do need, I think we need to buy two. What I'm going to ask you guys to talk about a little bit and then hopefully propose it to the Board of Finance tonight and then move it to town meeting is to purchase one. Um, it's, it's, it's the proposals we've got, I think, are going to run us no more than 65000 It's probably going to be around 60, 55. And that's fully outfitted. That's fully outfitted. outfitted. Yeah, okay. fully outfitted. Yeah. <laughs> But I'd like to move it. We have to move it. We're just putting good money after bad, and I, I think we should should do that. And and I'm going to propose that during the ARPA <coughs> discussions coming coming up in the next mm -hmm. month or so, that we put the second a second car in, in that, that. You know, um, so that we'll have four good functioning cars. Do our 
Are police officers have any preferences to the type? Do they want a sedan? Do they want a Tahoe? Do they want an Explorer? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm and, and, the the, and the appropriate, yeah. and there's a, a, a price difference when you yeah. go through those things. I think that the, the, the two choices or the common vehicles right now are the Chargers and the uh, Explorers. Okay. Um, I don't think there's a preference between our guys as to which they have. Um, I, I think I kind of like the, uh, the Explorers. But I don't. I would leave it up to the police to tell me which are the better. There were, there, I saw a discussion at some point. I think it was in Saybrook about Explorers versus Tahoe, and the, and there was some concern that the Tahoes were more money than the Explorer because they were bigger. Yeah. But I think I saw some numbers too where they were very close because Ford or Chevy doesn't have something the Explorer size with a police package. Mm -hmm. So okay. when you're talking SUVs, you're talking ballpark same figures, and we're talking sedans. Yeah. You're probably talking pretty close to the same figure also, but. Um, and then as far as fully outfitted, the lights, the sirens, and all that, is, is Whelan participating these days? Well, certainly they'll be given an opportunity, think. but there's another light outfit in, in mm -hmm. town that we might go to, too. Mm -hmm. Whelan has been incredibly yep. generous to this community yep. for, for yep. many, many years. Um, and, you know, I'm kind of probably going to put a plug in over there, too, and see if what they have. I know I'm not going to, not probably, I'm going to go over mm -hmm. there and see if they have anything that's coming up. Because if they do, then um, and they and they want to continue to with their generosity, then that would certainly be the way we would go. And as you and I spoke, and just so you know, Jim, I, I would like to see the same color. I, I know we, we were very fortunate how we got our cars in the past, mm -hmm. and we were to you know the misfits. Um, it would be nice if we had a uniform, blue, gray, black, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. so they know that deeper police forces is this and, and I might take it one step further in my opinion possibly is to have them marked in some way mm -hmm. so that people know that they you know these cars unlike state police cars where the, the state police officers take them home mm -hmm. you know they're they're take-home cars every there's different guys and if if they're on the side of the road you know I, I like the fact that our residents can look out and see a police car and know it's a police car and driving through the neighborhood mm -hmm. And my, my personal preference would be to have some sort of marking on it. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe not as ex, ex, as uh, extravagant as Old Saybrook because they have yeah. they have yeah. they have a rather extra. But but Chester and, and Essex have markings. You know, mm -hmm. that more or less for the uneducated people that see a that Dodge Charger or an Explorer, they don't know if it's a cop car or not. <laughs> now, sometimes the police want to be undercover and they don't want to be found. But mm -hmm. you know, I I think we might look into maybe possibly the. The, the same colors and possibly marketing the cars. Mm -hmm. so. <clears throat> okay, well. Um, and the only other thing I would, I would like to look into, you're, you're asking to buy one now and one made with the ARPA. I would like to look at buying two now mm -hmm. and see if there's any better deal. Yeah, well, that's, you aren't going to get much better yeah. deal on vehicles today because there's no vehicles out there, right. but it won't hurt to ask. Mm -hmm. yep. And if, if we could save a few thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, whatever it may be, I would like to at least try mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And push the article money along, or whatever. However, we find, you know, buy them. No, I think that's a good point. I would like and to certainly, if you, look can, at that. if you can get a bargain with two, as opposed to one. Yep. Um, and that's not. I, we're going to do that. Who knows what we'll get? I'm going to ask tonight, though, that we, we move to the um, to our recommendations mm -hmm. to the board of finance that we move for on one. Yep. With a not to exceed sixty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. um, if we find that there is a bargain, then we come back and ask for more. Okay. Um, so if, if you're okay with that, we'll just, let's let's take a motion mm -hmm. just so we can rec the board of selectmen can recommend that. I make a motion that the uh, that we forward to the board of finance um, to purchase one car, mm -hmm. fully outfitted, not to exceed sixty five thousand dollars. Okay. I'll second that with the option of looking at two cars. Mm -hmm. yep. There you go. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda is discussion and possible action of a salary study. Um, I forward you guys yeah, the proposals I, I that we have. I got them all here. I didn't, I didn't well, change Well, um, Bud and I have interviewed uh, both, or all three uh, applicants for the project, and um, there were pretty divergent, uh, di divergent or organizations. Um, and also, both in, both in, uh, in their operations, but also in the cost. Mm -hmm. um, you weren't at the last board of finance no. meeting. We had. Uh, we, oh, we were, at the board we of finance. Up. 
I was at the last selectmen. You were okay. Sorry, the board of finance. We we so you remember yeah. that we were authorized to spend up to nine thousand. Yep. Yep. Um, one of the proposals was for uh, ten thousand plus travel time and all that kind of thing. And they were going to do everything over, over uh, Zoom, all the interviews over Zoom. Um, and she was not from in state. I, I think she was from down in uh, Washington. Um, but the next proposal, the next lowest proposal was from an organization in North Carolina, mm -hmm. but they have a person in, uh, in Connecticut. Um, they were good. I, I actually liked, I liked them very much. And Bud liked them very much, but they um, they were going to charge travel time to come down for the interviews for one day, and then all the rest of the interviews were going to be over Zoom. And I, I just didn't like that. I don't think they're going to get the right information that they need. They're not going to get the right face-to-face uh, -face conversation that they're going to have with people as they're trying to, to warn things, to, to gather information. Um, and the last which I, as, as you guys are aware, I very rarely am happy to go with, or very rarely do I just go with low, low bid because mm -hmm. it is low bid. And that's the case with this. I, I actually, I didn't throw it out because it was low bid because she was a very good interview. Um, but she is from Middletown. She's going to come here for every, everything. Uh, mm -hmm. And in the end, she also is a human resources consultant and I'd like to move, maybe in the next budget, move so we could budget a little money for human resources. This is a, um, a growing staff and uh, HR, an HR person to just count on the first selectman to be able to be an HR person is not always the right, right thing to be. Um, so maybe we could just hire her, find, find some room in the budget for a con an HR consultant when, when, when need be. So it opened up that relationship with her with that. Mm -hmm. so, um, Bud and I have chosen uh, Deb Millardo. She's from Middletown. Uh, it, it's a good proposal. I think we're going to get good information, and she will have it done. I think she suggested it be within 45 days after starting. So, we'd like to get started. I'd like to suggest to the board of uh, board of finance that we're going to get started. Um, well, I, I like the one on one. Yeah. You know, versus yeah. Zoom. I mean, Zoom is. So you, you, you hear all the from schools to everything, Zoom is, some, is, some, is better than nothing, but not well, much. What bothered me here, almost more than the Zoom was, you know, here's a proposal and here's travel time to come do the work. It's like, you know, it should be included. Not to criticize, but yeah. I would just fill it in, fit, put it all fit in it into the proposal. In. Yep. Um, sure. So that's where we're going to go. I, I'm, that's where I'm recommending. Mm -hmm. I'd like to get her started so we can have this as quickly as we can because we had talked about having it done by September. So oh, I, I, I'll make a motion because I didn't interview the lady, you and mm -hmm. Bud did, and then, uh, we'll go on your recommendation mm -hmm. um, with the numbers. I, I'd rather have someone local. Yeah, yeah, I, I um, like that too. I, I think they know the community a little bit better than someone that's coming out of D.C. or North Carolina. Or yeah. I don't care the other lady was somewhere out in Connecticut. But at least Middletown, they know the mm -hmm. surrounding community. Yeah, I didn't say all of these groups have done uh, this service for communities <coughs> around, around Connecticut, around us, um, not right next door, but around us. So uh, they've all worked in, ta in the state. Mm -hmm. um, Deb Millardo has worked um, in, in very close towns. Mm -hmm. um, and like you said, she's, she's local. and. and I, I like local. She she actually worked in the Madison Town Hall for many years and was their HR person. So, and did their salary study um, while she was yeah, there. Yeah, no problem. Great. So we have a motion. Did you second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay. We're moving through this. I didn't mm. think we we're going to go this quick. Um, Item number nine is approval of the 2021 resolution and memorandum of agreement between the town of Deep River and the state of Connecticut Department of Emergency Services and Public Protection. Um, this is something that we have uh, done in the past. Every year we, we have to do it. Uh, last year we actually had to catch up on a couple of years. Um, and this year we're catching up again because um, it was emailed to um, our former emergency operations manager, um, and we just we just got it. So um, it's a resolution uh, that we enter into 
and delivered to the state of Connecticut DEP or Department of Emergency Services and Public Protection any and all documents which seem necess necessary or appropriate and that the first selectman is authorized to direct and execute and deliver any and all documents on behalf of the town. Um, it's really something that's every year just I, it, it's a formality it's just a formality yeah. so during emergencies um, we can uh, apply for FEMA uh, assistance and, and also um, emergency uh, assistance mm -hmm. from the group so so this this <clears throat> is right the approval of the 2021 yeah just going back okay yeah and how long we'll have to do another one for 2022 yeah, relatively 2022 soon. will be due um, at some point Okay. I mean December, but they uh, they have my email address. Okay. No, I'm just <laughs> this, uh, as far as I know on these things, they are at the end of the year. We send them so that we can send them. Okay. Oh, okay. I was going to say, is there any advantage of this doing no. twenty one and twenty two no, at the same time? I don't think yeah. we can yeah. because yeah. oh, because it's not due until December. Not, I, didn't know, awesome. I didn't know if it was due in January and, and, and we're late or whatever. So no, this this I want one, a two for one exactly. <laughs> this was due on December okay. of last year, okay. but we didn't get it, so we couldn't do it. So if we can have a, um, a motion to adopt the resolution as uh, the authorizing resolution of the Board of Selectmen. I make a motion that we uh, approve the resolution as read by, by Angus McDonald um, for the approval of the 2021. Put the memorandum in there as well. The memorandum. The resolution. Oh, the memorandum of agreement. That's not in the, oh yes it is. Yeah. The resolution and memorandum okay. of agreement. Okay, resolution and members. memorandum, thank you. Good job. I'll second it. Good job. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. All right. Now, I'm going to ask for a motion to go into executive session. I'm sorry, everybody, and I'm sorry to the camera, but we, we do have to discuss the, uh, the union contract, and that needs to be in executive session. I'll make a motion. We go into executive session at 6.58. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, thank you. We're back out of executive session. We voted to come out of executive session at 7.07. Um, no actions were, were taken. No votes were taken. Um, and now, after that, that conversation, I will entertain a motion to authorize me to sign the, uh, the union contract for, for this year. And I think it's for a four-year contract. Yeah. I'll make a motion to have Angus McDonald sign the four-year contract for the municipality union second that all those in favor aye aye all right um all that done any other think town we'll news <laughs> no i think that's well i think we will have some big town news in a couple of weeks but let's wait until we actually have it so. yeah okay. um we'll have a motion to adjourn i make a motion we adjourn at uh, 708 second all those in favor aye aye, aye. Everyone, this is the July 26, 2022 Board of Finance meeting. Um, first thing is, first thing is, we should welcome back our. I wish this to be a complimentary term. A uh, our visual crew, our support crew, videographers. Uh, videographers. There you go. There is a there is a much more aggressive term. So thank you for uh, joining us and. Uh, uh, although Angus assures me that he has been putting out the uh, uh, the YouTubes that online, but uh, I do find people from time to time will stop me and say they see seen us, they saw us on TV, and we must uh, thank you for that kind of thing. So, uh, so uh, thank you uh, there. So, uh, first item on the agenda would be audience of citizens. We have to approve the minutes. Oh, we have to. Oh, I do, and that is actually on my. Is actually on my thing. So, and you and I practice today. We are asking for a approval of the June twenty eighth uh, minutes uh, board minutes. Does uh, would anyone propose to accept those? So moved. Second. Yeah. And second. All in favor, please say. Uh, oh, uh, discussion. discussion. Sometimes you want me to discuss it. And sometimes <laughs> you. Know, I get confused. We always would want you to discuss it. All right. Would anyone like to discuss? The minutes? No. 
Uh, here, hearing none, uh, can I have a, all those in favor of approving the June meeting minutes? You say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, then I can now go to my audience of citizens. Unless Angus has found a, uh, a citizen out there, we will move on. It is, you know, we, we say audience of citizens all the time, and from time to time we do have audience. It's a catchy term, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Audience is a gathering, citizens are people who have obligations to participate in their government, and uh, we, and Angus, I need your help. Do all boards require or give participation of citizens, audience of citizens, or is it at the discretion of the board? Um, it, well, every board is different. Like planning and zoning, they are required at certain times to have public hearings. Yes. Um, once that public hearing is done, they're, they're, the public is not allowed to speak. They're, but statutorily, forget about whether they want okay. to or not, they're not allowed to speak. Um, other groups, even the Board of Selectmen, we, we are gentle <laughs> and allow for our audience of citizens, but oftentimes, whatever topic is being discussed st stirs the interest of mm. one of the audience and they will have something to say. Um, and we generally allow it, not always, it depends on the subject and things like that, but generally. But no, not, not everyone is required. And I wish to call, and I only call for the, for the moment. Uh, I think it is a generous of us to have an audience of citizens, ask citizens to participate. Um, we as a group, historically have only allowed citizens, I'm too strong, have only allowed citizens to participate when we asked at this point in the meeting. Uh, how, how did you phrase it? Soft. I have from time to time gone soft and, uh, and I shall not, and, and various board members have pointed out to me from time to time that citizens have the right to speak early in the meeting but not throughout the meeting. Right? That, is, that is the truth. Um, but I, I, I tend to, depending on the tone and depending on the topic, feel like sometimes it's okay to just go ahead. And that's probably and, and, that's probably and you've done it. It hasn't mm -hmm. worked out other than it can that softness can backfire. It can. It should stay um, consistent. But uh, I wish to uh, point out to the board it, we should take pride in ourselves asking citizens to attend our meeting and giving them an opportunity to talk. And I guess they just wanted to finish it in a positive term. So, uh, with that, Tommy, who is a citizen, but Tommy, uh, the treasurer's report. Okay, uh, hopefully everyone either received it, uh, uh, I know it was sent out by Kathy, and you have the hard copy there. Um, let's see, let's start with, Okay, so to th these balances as were as of yesterday. So I did make a wire transfer today. We took eight hundred thousand dollars out of the general fund and wired that over to the uh, uh, municipal suite money market account. And uh, so that was done this afternoon. Um, I will say that uh, good news is that the interest rates have gone up. Liberty Bank uh, increased their uh, interest rates almost, so we're almost double what we were getting before. So on the capital improvements borrow uh, uh, account, uh, it went from 0.30 to 0.60. On those other two accounts, uh, went from uh, 0.35 to 0.65. So that's that's uh, that's good news. I did notice on the capital improvements borrow uh, that was originally a, a million four hundred twenty-five thousand. That was our bond issue, and that money was deposited into that uh, special account at Liberty Bank, where we can actually get interest. And I did see there was about a, a twenty-eight thousand dollar mm -hmm. disbursement. On that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, let's see. I did make three wire transfers uh, during the month. They all went from uh, our Citizens Bank General Fund account into the uh, Municipal Suite Money Market account. Uh, one was on July fourteenth for a million dollars. One on July twentieth for a million dollars, and then today. Uh, the 800,000. So we've, uh, in the last month we've transferred 2,800,000 tax, uh, actually tax revenue monies in, into that, uh, that account. Uh, the ARP fund, that American Rescue Plan Act, where we can actually get a little bit of interest on that account, uh, 
in the last year, so it was from July of uh, 26 of last year to July 25th of this year, we are in $463.88. <laughs> we did get this month, we did get $56.14 uh, in, in interest. Um, our education um, equalization grant monies, uh, the, the first payment that we'll, we'll receive will be in October of 2022, so in this uh, new fiscal year, and that will be a quarter of um, the amount that we receive. And on the capital improvement borrow uh, uh, account, uh, at our bond issue, uh, with, uh, it's actually with Dime Bank, it was $1,425,000. Uh, the first annual principal payment and interest payment will be due on August 15th. So we'll be paying uh, $95,000 in principal, and uh, the rest will be 8,104.69 will be in interest for a total of 103,104.69. So that interest is actually from when that account opened up on uh, June 8th to um, August 15th when, when it's due. So interest accrues from for that period of time. Uh, on that account, uh, there's the one principal payment a year, and but there's actually two interest payments a year. So the other, just the, the interest payment will be due on February 15th, and that interest payment will be $21,612.50. Uh, that loan is for 15 years, uh, three and a quarter percent fixed rate. Uh, so that's pretty much it. I did, uh, if you look at the, the bottom line, we have the Total of the account balance is nine million four twelve four forty six fifty, and you look at where we were last year at seven million eight twenty three four sixty five nineteen. Um, that looks pretty impressive. However, if you if we subtract out the uh, capital improvements borrow account and we uh, and we take away the uh, American Rescue yeah. Plan Act, uh, brings us down to. Uh, Less than we have actually less this year than uh, last year. We have a seven million three fifty seven five zero six. Having said that, we will be getting some additional uh, money certainly in the next couple of days from uh, our tax revenues. Uh, uh, we're month end. I'm sure we'll be getting quite a bit of money. Kate will be busy the next uh, couple of the, days. Uh, the one point nine one point three nine. That is our borrow. I assume. Uh, Yes. Okay. No, oh, and according to Angus, the the attorney either told you to or advised you to put that into a separate account uh, to get uh, we can actually get interest on that uh, that money. Uh, and my curiosity is, it, we will see it in the budget is going into the general fund. It's, I assume they are putting it into a separate account because, and we will spend it too. We are concerned about earning arbitrage on it. Yeah, we don't have an arbitrage report. Yeah, there was a story that was told to me when I was a, a young accountant, as opposed to an aged accountant. Uh, <laughs> is there was a, uh, I think, a county in California who went out and issued, I think it was a hundred million dollar bond of which they were doing a ten million dollar project. They did the ten million dollar project and invested the remainder. Oh. It, it earned enough in taxable things to pay for the <laughs> entire bond issue. And the government said, "This is not exactly what we had planned." So they have made. Now you have to. Uh, uh, now you have to report periodically. And while it's silly to think that we will earn more on this, but interest rates are going up. So, but him, I assume that is why. Uh, complimenting Tommy. Here is, I do have contacts with the tax collector. Here is an update, I think that oh, one is. Here's a, a brief update uh, for taxes as of today. I'm not sure there's much more than what Tommy has pointed out. I give, <laughs> she has given us the sort of detail of what has been collected. If you remember at the annual meeting, citizens give her the right to collect property taxes on your real estate two times a year. So of the real estate, which is the workhorse of our taxes, uh, she's expecting about, we are expecting about $14 million, of which to date about 26% has been paid as of today. R uh, motor vehicles, we've collected a little over 55%. It is paid all at once. It, it is difficult to make uh, too much uh, out of it at this point. Uh, last year, on July 27th, we have collected 
six, uh, 4.5. This year we have collected 4.65. A little bit more, but again, I think we should all be hesitant. Let's say taxes are coming in strong and uh, have nothing to particularly, do, at least at the moment, no reason to be concerned. So, uh, as Tommy pointed out, the largest taxpayers will pay on the last possible day. Um, those who have mortgages and um, uh, citizens will pay in escrow. We should get about a 1.5, 1 1.6 1 million this week, and it's clicking along. And another one that plays, they get about a little over 200. So oh, we should get a little over, <coughs> at least over $2 million by the end of the week. So yes. they have till, I believe it is August 1st, to pay without right. a penalty. Right. Um, it, what is, I keep using the word interesting. I find these things interesting. Um, <coughs> People have already, there's, we've still got a long way to go, getting 13 million, uh, what, 14, 15 million dollars. It is amazing how many people will pay late uh, and incur the interest cost, but they do pay in the town of Deep River. That is the good news. You're only going to get half of that this time around. Maybe a little bit more than half. You get the motor vehicle tax, you get the half the property tax, but the other half is good change. That's correct. You won't get 14 or 15 million. No, no, we will not. We get eight, nine, maybe. You would expect by the end of August to have about eight or nine coming in, but we shall say. Good. Can, right. I, can I add one point uh, to Please. Tom's report? Uh, this is a very minor detail, Tom, where it says Memorial Fund Account Community Fund. Technically, the Memorial Fund no longer exists. It was spent out a few years ago. And, and the title could change if you wanted it to, or if it's legal to do so, et cetera. Really, the only fund there is the community fund at this point. Oh, okay. So instead of the memorial fund, you want the community fund account? Yeah. Okay. That would be more accurate. Okay. There is no more memorial fund. Gotcha. We Thank ran you. two initially, didn't we? Two we, funds? We did. Okay. We did. And uh, the memorial fund was. Uh, spent out on purpose uh, because there were some rules and regulations to that. There, there are less rules and regulations to the community fund oh, okay. because the, uh, the memorial fund came from the visiting nurses some time ago. I remember the some time ago. Good. Community fund. Get the past park. Do you get the past parking with uh, in the community fund? <laughs> on, uh... Uh, no, we need to have three properties. <laughs> <laughs> Railroads. Um, Angus, that uh, brings us to Selectman's report. Do you have anything that you would like to take us through? Two things come to mind, and uh, there's probably more, but I can think of two right now. Um, uh, the first is uh, police vehicles. Uh, we spoke with the Board of Selectmen and uh, voted to uh, recommend that we uh, we purchase at least one police car and uh, and shop for two and see if we get a if we get a better deal if we buy two. Uh, and now and now the backstory. Um, you you are all, all fully aware, I'm sure that, that that we have increased our police force um, as a result of the need for cars. We had the cars that we needed, but they were older cars. We did get a new car donated to us from Wayland Engineering, as we spoke of at the selectmen's meeting. They've been incredibly generous to the community for many, many years. Um, but as of right now, I don't believe that they have any cars available. That they don't. I'm going to follow up with them again, but um, I'm not. I don't think that they have any available. We have got two cars that are. Um, I would suggest at this point we're putting good money after bad. They're costing us more than they than they should. And if you look at the uh, vehicle maintenance line, you'll see that was dramatically overspent last year. We've already spent. We probably already spent it this year. Um, I think it's. I think we need to do that. The the initial shopping that we've done it looks as if we can get a car for somewhere between sixty and sixty five thousand. I would like, and that's fully outfitted, um, including you know the cameras that and the recording devices that we just purchased will transfer right over to the car. Anything that can be transferred will, um, the computer and things like that. But um, we need them, 
and I'd like very much for us to move to town meeting to purchase at least one with a price not to exceed 65,000. Um, and if, if, if we find that we get a bargain for two, I'll, I will come back to you guys for that second one. But, uh, uh, where, where is that coming from? You don't I would recommend that it comes out of our um, cap. Well, we, I, I'm not sure what we have left in capital. I haven't looked into not that. Not enough for a car. Not yeah, much. not enough for a car. Right? So um, <coughs> we transferred out of, out of the general fund. Excellent question. But I give as background the note that I sent to you. I believe we will end June with a surplus of at least four hundred and thirty some thousand dollars. And I match I think that is a little on the conservative side, but I give you that comfort. I give you that comfort that the yeah. general fund is the surplus is growing a tad. Yep. And I think uh, what I what, what we originally discussed was the first car going you know, buy the first car immediately or as quickly as we can. The second car uh, would, would go back to the town. Uh, to utilize ARPA funds, or at least that, that was my suggestion. Um, the, the board of selectmen uh, decided or talked about the idea that, it, that sometimes if you buy two, you get a better value, better cost, better price. If we can, if we can do that and buy them immediately together, then that's what we would suggest. So what would you be taking to the town, a public Well, uh, right now. Two cars, right two now, sources? Right now I'm asking, we voted to ask you for up to sixty-five thousand for a car. Okay. If we find we get a better deal, I, you know, who knows what cars are available um, mm -hmm. out there right now. So we will um, we'll start that process. Uh, How many cars do we have? We have four. Okay. Right now we have five, but um, three of one one of them is not outfitted. It's just been a spare. Um, the other two are uh, the other the four that are being used all the time. Two of them are. Um, are, are just have got too many miles, too many hours. Are they shared amongst the officers? No. They each have their own car. Mm -hmm. They're all the, the cars are getting. One of the cars is getting five shifts a week. The others are getting four. So you're asking the board of finance to give you the authority to take to a town, town meeting. meeting Request to buy one car not to exceed 65. 65. Okay. And the second car comes in how well, into that? The second car, and Dwayne did <coughs> pipe up, but the, the second car will come in if we go to Saber Ford and they give us the best price. We ask them, hey, if, what if we buy two? If they say, well, if you buy two, rather than 60000 it will cost you. 110,000. So we save 10,000 and we'll come back and say, hey, we can get a bargain if we do this. I, I follow the concept of, of savings, but would you cancel the authority of the Board of Finance or is that nullify what the Board of Finance is the already gives you? No, I would come back for an additional cost. Okay. So uh, I'm going to, that just fits into my cancel. You would cancel it and ask for another one that would allow you to spend up to yeah. Well, or, well uh, yes and no. I mean, if, if you if you happen to go to Saybrook Ford or, or wherever, mm -hmm. wherever we're going to purchase yeah. it, yeah, wherever we are, and, and, pull that out and they say one car is sixty five thousand, mm -hmm. we can get two cars for one hundred twenty six thousand. Mm -hmm. Then I think you should come back and say we're looking for two cars yeah. versus the one car. So mm -hmm. I, I would probably do some research at first. Well, I, I will. Uh, we're certainly going to do research before we go to oh, town meeting. Right, but should we even be asking for? Tonight, or should we? No, the only reason that I'm asking for tonight is number one, I didn't think about the bargain the, the yeah. until after we had that, yeah. and there is no there's no board meeting in August. Okay. Um, yep. That's the only reason for that. Um, if, so that's our that's our concept that we're that at least I was looking for yeah. to see if we can get two for and if, get a, a save. If if the if the second one was, is going to be. Probably ARP, ARPA money. That's what I was. We're going. That's what I was suggesting. Well, that we do. What about authorizing the purchase of two, one sixty-five, half of it out of the town budget, if you will, and the other half out of the ARPA, ARPA money, and that way you you can't you you cover purchasing both at the same time and just where the money comes from. I mean, we're still, yeah, we still have to get approval. But we have to. Well, I know you, you have to get approval. Is 
that what you it's want certainly to do? Cleaner. It's certainly cleaner. This is, <clears throat> frankly, we got on a separate road from what I had planned on. Mm. Um, and I, I didn't. I, I took them down the dirt road. I didn't. I didn't, <laughs> um, I, I, didn't make, I didn't make an adjustment yet in the request. The request initially was for one car. I'm reluctant. I'm reluctant. We need two cars, but I'm reluctant to ask for $110,000 um, for two cars if there are alternatives. Um, and if, or if we can, and, and there is an alternative with the ARPA money. Thinking, my thinking with the ARP is that that is being put together, that large ask to the town is being put together now. I'd, I'd rather than go in with just a car and then a month later go back with 15 other requests. I'd like to put all that together. So we will do some research. I would like to have authorization to go to town meeting. So if we can buy a car and if we find there is no bargain, then we can go to town, schedule a town meeting, and go and, and purchase a car in a timely manner. In a couple of months, we will come back to the to you and then to the town with a larger package that will probably include a second car, um, and that will be from the ARP funds. And certainly, when we're shopping, we'll say, "Hey, can we buy two? <laughs> Get the bargain for two. We'll fund one now, we'll fund another one later on. Gives you the flexibility, but it gives you flexibility to negotiate. If we ask for, if we ask for one and caliper is one. Yeah. Board of Finance, thoughts? So, a um, couple months ago, we talked about the ARPA funds, and they were specifically, we had, I believe, just three buckets. Mm -hmm. um, can you refresh my memory what those were? One was social, public safety. Um, Public safety, capital improvements, basically, public safety, capital improvements, um, social services, and arts and well being. So, this falls into the bucket of Cap public safety? Yeah, public, capital, public safety. Okay. Yeah. And does that fit within the budget that oh, we yeah. have planned? Oh, yeah. Because I know we were buying a fire truck with some of that money as well. So, I'm assuming about two. How much is it $600,000 per? There are, there are uh, 650000 now, approximately, and another 650000 coming. So we will, we've got a million three. So about 400000 is going to be spent on? Right now, we've spent 300000 We've authorized 300000 to go towards um, the okay. radios for all of the, right. all of the public service, um, you know, fire, ambulance, public works. Police already have it, and emergency operations. So that's three hundred thousand is gone from that. Um, this would add to that. Um, so that pretty much would eat up all the public safety dollars. It could. It could. We'll we'll see. Wasn't public safety fifty percent? I think I think public safety was lumped in with capital improvements, and that was that was about fifty percent in twenty five twenty five. So six hundred thousand. And that's a valid interpretation of those funds that. It, the police car is not considered part of our budget. It is, but the the final ruling from the federal government was that capital improvements, normal parts of your budget, can be included in this if you receive less than ten million dollars. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, and <laughs> we, just, we just missed it. Now, some towns didn't wait for the final ruling; just went out and bought fire trucks and ambulances and spent a lot of money on their capital improvements. Mm -hmm worked out for that job that that was okay. Um, we have gone a uh, slow and steady route, waiting for the waiting for the final ruling and all that kind of stuff. Good. And um, one other thing that we that I, I'm studying, I haven't brought it in front of the board yet, but I'm researching with um, some communities, and I'm speaking with a fellow who has facilitated at least one other town has put some of this ARPA money into actual recovery for local businesses can can apply for and be granted a, a you know probably nowhere near what they lost when you divide it up into all of them. But we can find a budget number that we can take from the total and put a small grant together for the for some of the local businesses if they can do an application. This fellow has done this for at least one other town, I think two. And he um, it takes what I like about it is 
he de- he he runs the program. Mm-hmm. So it takes it out of the town hall, it takes mm-hmm. it out of our hands. He develops the questionnaire, which he's already done. He <coughs> develops all of the application forms for the businesses to submit. He reviews them, ensures that they check all of the boxes, and if they do, then then we can go and and, and get some of the businesses who have lost the money. And I I, I would suggest. Our restaurants suffered more than anybody. Uh, I'd like to give them an opportunity to uh, <coughs> to get some recovery. That 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 really was the the mission of this money. Like What's it for him? Does he get? Oh, oh he gets paid. Yeah, okay. which comes out of the ARCO funds. Yeah. The question from the selectman is seeking a recommendation from us to send to a town meeting our approval. Send it to town meeting. Uh, up to $65,000 to buy a police vehicle. A police vehicle. Fully outfitted. Okay. Fully outfitted. Uh, does anyone on the Board of Finance wish to make uh, that proposal, that recommendation? So if we recommend it now, he can't do anything with it until he finds out the price of the car and if you can obtain a car. And no, I don't think no, so. I could, I could, I, if we go down meeting, if, if you guys will recommend it. Then I Didn't will you be just getting, say if they have cars? Well, yeah. Yep. Every, of course, I've got to do some shopping, but I keep, I'm, there's no point in me even going shopping if I don't have any money to spend. So if you guys will send it to town meeting, I will do some additional research um, and find a car. And once we find that car, find a real price, we will go to the town meeting and say, this is the car, this is what we'd like to spend. What happens if we don't? I mean, it sounds to me what like it's a great in the sense that it takes the police off the road if the car breaks down, right? Well, we've been borrowing, Chester has no police right now, so we've been borrowing their car. I have, that's funny you mentioned that because I have seen our guy in a Chester. Yeah. yeah. We will make do, yeah. but it's not, it's not makes sense. right for us to do that. And what do we do with the car that we're replacing? We'll sell. We will sell it. And then just, again, as a new member, just explain to me, um, because the world I lived in before is like you had to plan all your capital in advance. We just approved a budget, just started. Yep. Do we not think about this when we were in our budget? I did not think that this that this was going to get to this level this quickly. Um, it was in it was going to be in the budget to for next year. So do, should we be thinking ahead? Like how many years to get out of a car? So we need to be thinking <laughs> in. 2023, we need to buy this many cars and like something like that. Budget. Yes, no, our capital improvement plan, we will, police cars will be in there. Remember, our, our police force grew from two to four. We were, right. we, we were fortunate enough to we get the donated car and we had it. Now. So we, um, we, were, we didn't need to go out and buy one. Um, you know, I, I hate to say I was planning because I wasn't planning, but I was hopeful that Wayland would would have another car available. Um, they they did not the last time we checked, so um, we will go back to them and ask. These two of our cars have stories, don't they? They've been injured in battle oh, and uh, things stopped yeah. working by surprise. Yeah. Um, and you say two are not outfitted. Why aren't they? So does that mean they can't be used? The, the, the spare car, we have a spare car that is owned, it's in that 2000 and, 2000 and thir- 2009, 2011. It's a retired car. It's a retired car. The lights have been taken off it and used on another car. Um, but it, it was being used for traffic and going to meetings and things like that. You know, we look at the vehicle maintenance, so we, we budgeted 6500 uh, 6, and we Twelve thousand, almost two hundred. So we, we doubled the maintenance on the vehicle. Police cars or just town trucks? And police no, trucks. That's just police, police, that's just police car. Wow. So there's twenty percent of a, a brand new vehicle. All right. mm-hmm. That's all. Yeah. Grant, that's not all on one vehicle, right. but that's still a lot of so a lot of money that we're throwing away. Mm-hmm. But you are you are correct. This is we it will be in capital improvement. Mm-hmm. And with these two cars, we, we won't, we should not need a car for another four or five years. But I do think we should put somewhere yeah. like mm-hmm. long range plan and know that we're going to do it. 
if um, if it's okay with Bud, we can talk about some of the things that I've been talk we have been talking about with our um, auditors and our accountants, and talking about actually establishing a police line. Uh, so that will be part of that plan. Well, with your words, a police fund, fund. To get it out of the line. Yeah, to get it out of to get it out of here. Yeah. Yeah. And we're always going to need four cars. Or as long as we have, have as long as we have four cars. Um, Would it I, increase? Would we be getting more police? I don't think so. I, I I think we are right where we need to be. We've got coverage for. Two shifts a day. Well, then I we we still still make the motion that we authorize Angus to um, go to a town meeting to um, recommend purchasing a police car up to sixty-five thousand. Second. Second. All right. First and second. Any discussion? And when reserved, concern on uh, comments. If you're going to take a, this is just my take on it, you're going to take 65000 from our budget, our capital fund. And you're going to take surplus. Six, okay, surplus. And you're going to take 65000 from ARPA. I would just assume do it the other way around. Take the 65000 from ARPA, come back, do this later. That's just my opinion. But doesn't he still need to go to a town meeting for approval on that? On the ARPA, on ARPA yes. he does. Yes. Either way. Either way we have to go to town meeting. Mm -hmm. I was assuming you were going to check it out and go to the town meeting once. Yes. For either one car or two. Not go back twice. Well, um, not quite. What I wanted, uh, we're going to probably do that. I, do, I don't think we're going to find the bargain. It was a good idea. And it, and it's worth exploring. I don't think we're going to find that. I think that we're going to find we have we buy a car now, and then when, our, when the ARPA funds are ready to get to the town, which is probably going to be September, um, we buy a car then. So by doing what Russell suggested, does that slow the process down for you? Yeah. Okay. We wait for ARPA. Okay. We have ARPA funds. We have ARPA funds. We don't have approval. And how does that So what I would be doing with that is separating a car. We'd have a town meeting. To purchase a car. To purchase a car with ARPA. At $65,000. From ARPA. It doesn't say, now. the motion didn't say where the money was coming from. I think it does. It does. No, I didn't. Your motion didn't, right. but it will by the, by right. the end. Um, you're going to have to go my to my interest is is not is in not separating ARPA individual things from ARPA because we've already done that with the three hundred thousand we didn't do it we voted to but have not brought it to the town yet for the park and recreation music festival thing um, because I don't want to come in one thing at a time and then all of a sudden we find we're short I want to really have this planned out and, and go for what we're going to go for um, so waiting for September. Um, for the ARPA. Now we can, if you if, if you all want to, we can just bring 65,000 to town for ARPA funds. But I think it's a it opens up a bigger conversation and I'd prefer to keep that all together. I see what's happening in other towns around the ARPA funds. I don't think that's a good idea. No. I, no, I don't either. That's, that's why I didn't see that. Because you have all the people looking for social services yeah. and other, you know, mental health or, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. Saying, buying police cars for this, what about us? Mm -hmm. So I would like to see a whole thing. Yeah, that's what, that's what we're working, it's what we're working towards. So. <clears throat> other questions, other comments? All right, call the vote. Do we have to amend it or we do that afterwards? I don't think it has to be amended. I think it is a recommendation <clears throat> board of finance to take a request to the town for allowing us to spend out of town surplus up to $65,000. So that's amending that's Carmelo's. Different. That's different from what Carmelo's. Yeah, I didn't Carmelo's. say where it was coming from. 
Well, <laughs> if the Board of Finance is approving and you have no uh, condition otherwise, it's coming out of surplus. Yeah. Which is an understood then. We don't Did do we'll, ARPA. We don't. Uh, we bump into ARPA, but this ain't doing ARPA. Yes. As they say on the street. Right. So the motion should stay where it's I think their motion is well for us. Yeah. Yes. All right. Let's call a vote. All those in favor of sending uh, a request uh, to, for 65000 to buy a police car to a town meeting, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. All right. Three to one. All right. Looks like it passes. Thank you. Um, I will report to you what we find. Next thing to uh, to came from the board of selectmen actually comes from your chair and ours. <laughs> um, Bud and I have put out a request for proposals. We've called some people and uh, had three replies to our consultants for um, our salary study that we spoke about in the past budget season. We interviewed uh, three firms. I, um, there was a wide range of, uh, of cost, um, and while I'm not a uh, low bid guy, we did land at the low bid, which I think is actually good. Um, the person, we had one person who was beyond, the cost was beyond what we had, we had um, approved, which was, if, if she was head and, head and shoulders higher, we would have come back asking, for, or better, we would have come back asking for that, but there were some things in her proposal, and she's, that we, we just decided not to use it. Um, the second firm, which was very close, uh, is up based out of, I think, Wilmington, North Carolina, but has a- Louisville. 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 Louisville, Kentucky. But has a uh, representative in one of the partnerships in, in, in the state. Um, we spoke with them at length. What I, there was two, two factors with this particular proposal that I didn't like. One, and they were tied together really. Uh, they were going to come up to do interviews with the people on one day. They were gonna charge us travel time to get up here for that. Um, and anything that they couldn't get done in that first day, they were going to do via Zoom. Um, and it just didn't sit well with me, number one. I, I, I didn't like being charged travel. Here's the proposal. <laughs> this is what it's gonna to cost to do it. Um, and, I, and I don't like the Zoom factor. I think when you're interviewing folks about their job and their work, you're going to get more candid and more real responses in person. I thought that was important. Um, the person that we did choose is based out of Middletown. She's a human resources person. She will conduct everything with me in person. Um, and, uh, pardon? What's the name of the company? Uh, Deb Millardo, uh, consultant in human resources is the, is the firm. Um, and Mr. Malardo, the Malardo company, that's well within our... Uh, yes, well within. Well within, yes. Um, and uh, she's local, she's Milton. I, I like her. The, the other thing that I spoke with the Board of Selectmen about is I like the fact that she is in the human resources field. And it will open up a door that if we, in fact, can determine that we can use for services, we may be able to put into future budgets some funds to utilize some human resources consulting. Mm -hmm. I think as our town grows, um, depending upon a first select, and the mayor may not have human resources experience. Uh, very few do. It, it will have people do. Very few do. It will be uh, <coughs> beneficial for us to be able to call on serve and her for services and this kind of develops a relationship so that's good um, has she done other towns before? she has done all three firms have done Connecticut communities um, all three firms have done communities relatively near us um, she I, I can't remember the town these specific towns that she did but um, so Deb was in, she was the HR person in, in Madison, Madison and for 20 years in Middletown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she certainly knows the market. Yeah, she knows knows yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm going to repeat what Angus said. I think our folks need someone sitting beside them. Uh, 
being present, and that was one of the big ones. It was, it was, a, big, it was a big factor. I, I don't want to, it, it may have been the deciding factor between her and the other firm. I, I liked the other firm very much. They brought a lot to the table. But they didn't bring more to the table. Correct. It's important to me, and, and, and I bet others, that we do the rightest thing possible here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and having somebody local and experienced is, that goes a long way. Yeah, I think so, too. I, we all do. Right. The Board of Selectmen and the government recommend that this is who we go. So. Uh, hey, it's just curiosity and education. What kinds of things will this do? <coughs> Let's say they come in and sit to interview somebody. What kinds of things do they do? What, do they follow a certain questionnaire format? Is it, um, how do they react? How do they make their judgments? Well, um, they're going to provide a comprehensive evaluation of every job within the town. That's going to be looking at our existing job descriptions, um, job descriptions around the, the area, and also the conversation with the person, what do you do? Mm -hmm. So she will evaluate and um, revise uh, the current job descriptions for every job that's in town. Um, she's going to review uh, the hierarchical order of jobs using an evaluation system. She's going to evaluate. She's going to establish appropriate benchmarking standards and conduct salary surveys as needed for positions, um, similar positions with comparable Connecticut municipalities as required. Um, identify potential pay compression issues and provide potential solutions analyze and recommend changes to the present compensation structure to meet market analysis. This recommendation may include recommendations for individual positions as well. Um, I can't tell you the process that she's going to go through because I don't know. I'll tell you after. But she's going to speak with every, every, everybody who works here and about what they believe their job is. And she's going to evaluate communities around the state um, that are similar to us and see where, where the, the, the salaries are. What is the appropriate salary for the position? Does the union that, have any play in any of this? Because most all the town employees, or most of them are union mm -hmm. members, does the union affect what the job description is, or the salary compensation is? No? Sure. no. The brief conversations we have had, I guess, with these firms, I've asked the same question. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, this is a management task. Yeah. Um, when there is an interaction with the unions, time will tell. But right now, this is all being done by management yeah. and by us. Yeah. Oh, so really what it's doing is it's a fact-finding mission. Correct. Yeah. They want to know what you do, you know, what the compensation is, and your daily tasks and they'll compare you with someone in Essex or Chester or whatever their benchmarks are. Yeah. And remember, it is a competitive market. We, we, we should be competitive. So. so there's going to be a specific definition to each department or each job. There is. Each person's function. There is that now. That person's there. going to know, these are the, these, this is the outline of what I do mm -hmm. each day. Yeah. What's expected of me. Yeah. And she will apply, having my comment, she will apply some discount some of the things that people say, I, I'm attempting to be you. I need to know calculus to do uh, uh, to do whatever I do. Mm -hmm. She will challenge many of the things that you say you may need mm -hmm. to do your job. So is what she has shared. So it's basically how many people will add things to wow. what is required <laughs> to the things they need. But it's not to say they're not there. But yeah, and then they will identify key things and go into the market and find them other places. So uh, yes. I'm not doing calculus, so I don't care. <laughs> oh, I question a job that can't do calculus, so what's the first thing? So anyhow, yes, and we'll hopefully get started. This board asked that that be done. We were a bit vague. We said the fall. And I truly believe this woman thinks she can get that. Oh, yeah, by the yeah. Fall. yeah. All of them, I think. Actually, the, the larger firm that we did not, that we kind of discounted out of, out of car, they were, she was pretty backed up. But uh, these other, the other two would have been done by the fall, and Deb has indicated she will. And, and one of the things I'll just throw, one of the things that became obvious to me, we are not the only town that is looking to rewrite oh, no. descriptions and do market stuff. 
No. Whether it is the, the time and the age, I do not know, but we are not alone in this day. No, but we should also make a note to future generations, maybe put it in a time capsule, and they shouldn't wait 30 years to change. <laughs> 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 it's sort of like getting your driver's license. Uh, <laughs> passage, that is, finally. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of the things we chatted about with these folks. Once they hand us the study, can we Implement up, it. update it periodically ourselves? The general answer is sure, but uh, we shall see. Mm -hmm. yeah. We shall see. So, yeah. It's also all about time. All encouraging. You have the time to do it. This is, this is good. In the end, this yeah. will be a good thing. We need to do it. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, we should get started soon. And I think one of the things she offers in a proposal is she will come and talk to selectmen and board oh, yeah. finance if necessary. That's oh, yeah. one of the grandness of being closed, yeah. even if mm -hmm. we need to do it by Zoom. So, yeah. yes. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, you guys so when will she start? <laughs> when will she start? Yeah. Um, I, 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 I just called her a moment ago before the meeting and I said it's time. So I, she's going to start working with Angus. We're out of this until uh, Angus is the man on the street. So. Okay, so I mean, pretty soon. Not yeah, no, I expect, I expect it to be in a week or two. Oh, okay. So not yeah. until this week. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Excellent. Good. Sounds All right. good. Angus, anything else you wish to chat about, discuss? Nah. Are we done? Okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to remind you that you were you had success with your union. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We've reached an agreement. We'll be signing the contract this week. Um, and all is uh, all is well with union and management. Yeah, I wish that it hadn't taken as long as it did to come to an agreement, but it did. Well, uh, as an ex-goal to have, but these are extremely difficult times. You agreed to 5%, right? What was your inert, your first offer? I mean, go all the way back in time. What was your first offer? I think we offered um, two and a half, yeah. three, three and a half, and four. Maybe, okay. maybe we went, I don't think we ever got up to five. We might have landed it. No, we might have landed at five. We might have gone, we might have gone five at the last year. Okay. So what did you? Oh, so what did you it's, flipped, it's flipped around. Yeah. It's flipped around. We're going five, it's five, five four, and three. Um, with some contributions, but you know the, the reality of it is that uh, you know inflation is projected to be at six this year. Six plus. That is correct. And the other thing to remember about this, and I know I know it can be or this can be perceived as a rationalization, but um, the last contract four years ago. If you remember, uh, we were in a lot of questions as what, what kind of what was going to be happening with funding from the state. We had real serious concerns about our budget, and uh, and the union in their pretty initial year took a zero increase. So while I can't say it was paying them back, this it, it, it was last negotiation worked in in our favor as far as that goes, and, and they I would su I would su suggest that they. They uh, sac and actually the union sacrificed a year of increases in order to, to in order to help the town. I think this is an appropriate um, contract for, for the times that we're in. Yeah, I don't like front loading. On it. There's a lot of things I don't like, but in the end, this is a good contract for the town. Okay. And just for clarification, it's five four three three. There you go. Thank you. Five four. First year is five four. Four shares five, so then four, then three, three. There you oh, go. Thank, five. thank you. Yes, that's, that's, that's right. So it's, yeah. so it's a so four year contract. Is yeah. that the, the current one? Did we, was that four years? Yeah, the last two have been four years. Okay. And their contributions to health insurance was frozen, or did that increase? No, that, that increased. That increased? Okay. Not, not, it froze in the first year, and the second year, and then increases uh, percent each year. It'll end up at um, nine and a half. I mean, flipping back to the prior conversation, that's one of the things we talked about with our HR folks mm -hmm. when they look at attempt yes. to find comparative. Can they introduce the cost of benefits? Yes, and they can. And they sure seem is. to suggest yes. That is but, uh, yes. Certainly something we're looking at. So. It's an important part. It's a lot of it's 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 part. It's at least twenty-five percent of mm -hmm. right. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and the town has been generous. So, uh, generous, generous. 
All right, folks, that moves us over to the budget part of our meeting. Uh, you were sent two budgets, financials. Let's call the um, uh, the budget that was sent to you, financials that were sent to you that ended on June 30. Um, that is the one that I, I looked at and attempted to give you an estimate where I think the current surplus is. And I think that is about 430. Majority of that surplus comes from unbudgeted revenues. Dollars are still coming in for expenditures. This grammar school is still, I'm about to use a, a bird word to catch your attention, a mystery. Uh, last month they had about a surplus of unspent about 330. They're down to about 130, but dollars are still coming in. So I, uh, I anticipate there will be dollars there, but I have not assumed any. So, yeah. um, so I still think my 430 is a good number, but maybe on the conservative side. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we'll see the expenditures are, I believe you see it, the expenditures are, it's pretty close as far as that budget. Uh, I would uh, almost, oh, now does anyone have questions? Do you wish to go over June 30, the old or the new? The new is so new. It's, there's not much there to look at unless anyone yeah, would yeah. like to look at. Let me stay with the old, and I'm going to repeat things we already know. We have overspent in the old budgets of uh, town hall operations, much of it driven by um, oil and gas, oil for the building. Uh, there is still a few dollars left in what you saw in town buildings. I uh, hope that Angus can find places to spend the 15,000 or so on a new table. We did buy some. <laughs> we have not bought chairs. I like these chairs. Oh. You're the only one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that, that one there that you're sitting in there, that, that's, that one can go in the dumpster. Well. <laughs> no, not yours, but Jimmy's going to burn that. Yeah, I'm going to burn that one. <laughs> so, so anyhow, <laughs> but, uh, the town hall operations overspent. Building inspector is overspent. That's a bit of surprise from prior month, but if you think there is a correlation between building inspector's time with the amount of additions that people are putting on their houses, which we have gotten a substantial increase in revenue on. Uh, insurance, if you remember, we talked about insurance several times during the year. You shouldn't be surprised that that is a little over. Police, we just went through that a moment ago. Police is overspent. Civil defense, due to about $3,000 in COVID costs, overspent, all of which we chat about. Highway department is substantially overspent. That should not surprise anyone. We've been talking about it, but it's overspent. And if you look closely at your financials, you will see that the regional school is overspent by $975. Okay. Um, that is probably more of a mistake on my part. I took a number when we prepared the budget that somebody gave me in April, dropped it into a line item and never revisited it. Their actual number was $975 more than what, so we will put that, and who knows what they will spend and not spend during the year. So, so there is several over expenditures in the budget, lots of, un, that's a, lots of, lots of people coming in virtually on budget. So I'm going to leave the uh, June 30th unless people wish to go through it. Uh, and uh, again, the budget started June 1. There's not much in there to talk about. If we have reached an agreement on the union, if you remember in the budget, we put a contingency fund. Everybody got 3.5 and then we put a contingency. I and Angus have told Kathy upstairs to take that contingency and allocate it amongst all those who have salaries, all right? Or expecting to get raises. There's a bit of, a, I think what we did is prudent and logical. There's a bit of aggressiveness. The state law says that to change a budget item by more than $10,000, we should go to a town meeting. I don't think we have to go to a town meeting. This is what we told the town we were going to do. Uh, it is mo changing a line item by more than 10,000 something we can't do. So if you are tolerant of not going to town meeting and not taking motions, 
let Angus and I tell Kathy to allocate it across the uh, those who are getting budgets, unless anyone is uncomfortable with you, that. You did go to town meeting and they approved it. The town they meeting. approved that line item, yep. but now I'm taking that line item and changing it to a zero and moving it around. I'm going with you. That's town said for. we're yeah, expecting yeah, this to happen. Yeah, that's that's what, what, that is my rationale as well. Yeah, this, this was, was approved, approved for. This right. was approved at the town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Unless anyone is uncomfortable, we'll see how the auditors do. But um, well, that's right. We'll see. All right. Tell you next year. Okay. Uh, all right, everybody. Unless uh, you have anything else you want to chat about, uh, okay. If you have a moment, if you have a moment, which I've looked for for a while, I'm going to I'm going to say the following. Here, I brought my annual report. Okay. Uh, this is a grand document. If some of you, as I glance around the table, uh, many of you work for firms who sell things, people pay them money, and they attempt to provide that product at a, a cost less than what people buy it from. And they earn a dollar. They have financial statements that demonstrate that they are efficient. We work differently. We, by law, take money from people and say we're going to do things. Our financial statements are an attempt to demonstrate to citizens that they can hold us accountable for the work we do. Right? Uh, now, I'm going to also offer to you, while it is simple to say, this document is proof to citizens that we are accountable for what we told them. It is not a particularly easy thing to do. I'm going to take you, if you're tolerant, through a brief adventure into the annual, to the financial statements. And I'm going to start with the Table of Contents. Table of Contents starts with the Independent Auditor's Report. The state of Connecticut, some states vary, the state of Connecticut says, towns, put your financials together. Tell your citizens what you have done, but we're going to have somebody make sure that you do it correctly and we will have someone test your numbers. Uh, the uh, world of uh, municipal finance supposedly started in 1902 when the uh, Merchants uh, Association in the city of Chicago said to the town of Chicago, we don't think you're being particularly open about how you're spending our tax dollars. Uh, I will leave it to you to decide whether you think people may have a tendency to lean in one direction unless someone glances upon them. But, because this document is not particularly easy to understand, the next item is management discussion and analysis. It is a, written by the management, but they have very, very little ability to be flexible in what they talk about. Management discussion takes anyone who wants to read the document and walks them through how to read the document. Right? Uh, we then have financial statements. I want you to glance at, there are two types of financial statements in the annual report. First type, on the top, is government-wide financial statements. And there's two different statements there. Under that is fund financial statements. All towns have three types of financial statements. Balance sheet for government funds. That is what we put together. That is what we work on every month, the government funds. There is also a statement of net position, a balance sheet for those of you who remember your accounting, proprietary funds, which are businesses such as our sewer authority. It is possible that we could have a private firm come in and run our sewer. So the ability to have a uh, fund that is comparative to if a private business do it is how you would run this fund. And then the third type of fund that governments have is a fiduciary. It is money that we take care of in trust for others. Pension fund is the thing to think about. Now, just, and then there are notes that help you understand this whole thing, but I want you to glance at the last item. It is statement of revenue expenditures and change in fund balance. This, if you turn to this page, you will see the budget that we put together and talk about. Right? Let's take, and it will form the basis of government funds. Right? Um, government fund, think of what we do every week. We look at cash. We just issued a bond for a million four. It goes out 
the door as far as we are concerned. We buy stuff, we buy trucks. That cash goes out the door. That is the financials we look at, and that is how you will see government funds based on cash. But if you put those three funds together into a government fund statewide, you will see if we borrowed money, we set up an obligation that we must pay back in 15 years. Right? We bought fire trucks, we bought trucks. That is an asset that sits on the book. It is not an in and out, which is the way we see it. Let me have you now look at what we say in the financial studies. The next line highlights the financial statement. We say the assets and deferred outputs of the headlines of the town exceeds its liabilities and deferred outflows of resources at the close of the most recent fiscal year. This is last year's, we obviously have not done this year's, by $21 million, 576,651. Of this amount, 1,474,300 represents the town unrestricted net positions. If you turn to the next page I have given to you, and I'm working off the book, you will see a, at the top, you will see, um, I want to look at revenues. Revenues and, the first statement, okay, there it is, assets. Uh, no, haven't got it, good. You will see, statement of net position for the town. Government activities, the thing we are concerned about. Uh, business activities, our sewer and others. And you see assets. Assets are the things that we use to provide services. Liabilities are how we pay for it. The net difference is what citizens have paid for in taxes. If you look way at the bottom of adding the two of them together, you will see the $21,567.65. That is the total net position. That is what the town owns. Right. Now, if you continue to read the headlines, of this amount, and there we go, uh, represents the town unrestricted. If you look slightly above the 21, you will see that number, $1,474,000. That's the amount of dollars this town has in total that is available to meet other things which we have not yet restricted. The total town net position increased by $1,668. Now, I offer, isn't that tempting to think a small number? We have assets that we use in the town to provide services. We have maintained those, uh, those assets, and we have grown them by a small amount. This demonstrates to you that we are not allowing our assets to deteriorate. We are actually contributing to the assets that are needed to provide services. Let me use the next sentence, which is closer to us. As of the close of the current fiscal year, remember this two years ago, the town governmental funds report a combined ending fund balances of three million through fifty-five five three five five seven six seven one. I need to now take you over to the next page. Uh, assets, liabilities, and funds. Look on that very bottom number. This is the government numbers. This is what we concentrate on. Uh, there is a big difference in assets, liabilities, and net fund balance between what we worry about in government funds and what town-wide funds worry about. And if you're sitting on the beach reading this book, you will see in this document there is a reconciliation of the two of them. Hopefully you have picked up it is uh, assets. We spend cash. Once we spend the cash, it's gone. But in the town wide, you put assets on your books. You use them and depreciate them. And also on your books is the source of borrowings that funds those assets. So I offer to you, there is a highlight here. We are doing very well as what our citizens, but 
This is the document that we offered to citizens to demonstrate we told you we were going to do this and we are continuing to do it. So if you were stopped in the supermarket and someone with their green eyes shade comes up to you and begins to ask, you now know where to look. Now, just because everyone has such a smile on their face, I'm going to have you look at the very last sheet. The very last sheet that I have promised you is a town-wide source of uh, use and, uh, there it is, a town-wide activity. We have revenues coming in, we have expenditures. Every town in the United States creates this sheet. You can go anywhere, anywhere, if you're on vacation and so moved, you can go to every town you visit, ask for their annual report, and see this report. This is really cool. So, uh, as uh, who was Willie Nelson said, mamas make your uh, children grow up to be doctors, lawyers, and accountants. This is why, this is really cool stuff, okay? Look at, way on the left-hand side, you see categories of government activity. This is what we do. General government, public safety, health, et cetera, okay? That's what it costs us to run each one of those activities. If you glance down, you'll see sewer. That's what it costs us to run the sewer. Each of those activities collects a little bit of money, the sewer being the one that collects a lot of money, all right? But you now go all the way over, I'll rush you over to the net expenses. Each one of those uh, uh, activities, while they collect some money along the way, even sewer, is dependent on taxpayer funding. Okay? And if you see there's a shortfall about 15.2, and if you look down at the bottom, you will see that our uh, tax revenues comes out about 15.4. That is how we pay for the entire town. And I think we're doing a grand job. If you are, willing to work a little bit further with me. All right, look at the shortfall in the business type, sewers. The town of Deep River borrows money to put in the sewer plant. Once it is done, we hand it over to the water pollution control. But we still pay the bond. All right. But if you have moved all the assets to the sewer bond, you know, the account says you have to move over how you're paying it. So on the books in here, it looks like this water pollution control has responsibility for all the fine, all the debt. We do that. So if you glance further down, you'll see there's transfers between the general fund and the business fund by two hundred and ninety-three thousand dollars. So there it is, folks. There is uh, the financial reports that we are uh, putting together. We as the Board of Finance have responsibility for all of the finances to down. We are responsible for the, uh, the financial report. So if there are questions, people have the right to ask us. Although I've been doing this for 16 years and no one's ever asked me. So, uh, but we are ready when they get here. Thank you, everyone. I think I stuck that in in a, uh, in a quick period of time. But So again, I offer Hopefully this encourages you all to make your children accountants. It's a wonderful life. Everything balances at the end of the day. <laughs> all right, do I have a motion to scatter ourselves in the back? So move. So move. So move. First. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Say aye. Thank you.